Good afternoon, my name is Adam Olson and I am the MLA for Saanich North and the Islands. I'm Ryan Clayton and I am Adam Olson's constituency assistant. And you're watching uh, the 16th episode of the Public Circle Live. Today is Friday, June the 15th. Can you believe it? We are halfway through the middle month of the year. We're just about halfway through the of 2018. We're almost at the end of spring. By the time we do our next episode, uh, it will be, will be summer. It will be summer, and the days will be getting... I don't even really want to say it. Should I say it? The days will be Please getting don't. shorter oh. uh, following the summer solstice. That's not a very good deal. That's not. That doesn't make me happy. Thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, an exciting day nonetheless. We are going to be talking about some uh, very exciting things. Yeah, so... Um, just to, to kind of kick off, there was, you know, a, a bit of a, a little announcement today um, that, yeah. that uh, why don't you, what happened? So we're going to talk about the Wild Salmon uh, Advisory Council. Yes. That's what we'll be talking about today. And also the other issues around wild salmon, farmed salmon, happy to address uh, some of the issues that have been uh, raised today, certainly uh, at the announcement today, uh, some very important uh uh, issues been raised. Great. But first, love for you to share these videos. Yes. Um, make sure, uh, so, you know, we, we want to reach as many people as possible. We, uh, Adam right. always has a lot to say, so make sure to, to, <laughs> to like, uh, comment on this video, and, and share. Uh, it's it's okay. helpful for us as well. Uh, so let's just, I, I kind of want to go back. Say hi to Kathy first. Hi, hi Kathy. Kathy. Nice to um, Thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Uh, I just, I kind of want to go back um, and just really kind of start this off. Uh, Salmon has been a, f a fundamental part of what you've been working on in the last couple months um, going and and it's been a fundamental part of, of your your lived experience yeah. so why, why is salmon so important to you uh, well if you take a look at it it's here uh, on my wedding ring uh, it, it was the logo for my election campaign uh, for salmon uh, for the circle of life uh, forming the O um, produced by my uncle uh, Doug LaFortune uh, it has been, uh, it, I, I, it's the formative years of my life, spending the time on the boat with my dad fishing in the Saanich Inlet. He was a guide fisherman. His father was a fisherman. And my name, uh, really, uh, my Senchothan name, my Saanich name, uh, Sahanup, uh, comes from a long line of reef net fishermen from my Coast Salish side. So, you know, the, I, we've got fish oil in our blood and, uh, and we come by it very honestly. And, and frankly, uh, no, so the, the, the family ties, but in, in addition to that, I am responsible for, um, a bunch of ministries, seven ministries I'm the critic for, uh, and, uh, and I was trying to look at how I could make that work, frankly, and it was very, very difficult. And, and, uh, the, the ministries, um, the ministries all tend to have something to do or could have something to do with, with wild salmon. So, uh, the Ministry of Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations, Agriculture, um, what else do I have? Uh, local uh, Municipal Affairs and Housing, Transportation and Infrastructure, and it just goes on and on and on. All of these ministries have a responsibility when it comes to salmon policy, and so we had to find a way to make sense of that. And so by, by talking about wild salmon, we were able to deal with, and I was able to deal with the, the breadth of uh, the 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 policy challenge, the critic challenge that I have in a role as opposition uh, working alongside the BC NDP government. Yeah. And now, um, a few weeks ago, the BC Greens, and, and I was down there for this, uh, announced uh, a report um, called Standing Up for Wild Salmon, and I have it right here. Um, and Beautiful, within it, it? Uh, you both captured the work that, you've, you, that you, um, Andrew and Sonia, have done in the legislature. There's a, a great timeline in here that shows... Hold on, hold on. Show them the cute picture of me first. <laughs> the cute picture of you as, as a youngin. Where, was Where that? is it? Uh, it's not the most important part about it, but it does. Oh, no, it is. It, it brings is. it back to why this is important to me. Look There's my that. dad right above me uh, up into the left. Uh, that's my dad looking down at his, proudly at his son, and I'm looking down proudly at our catch. Uh, Proudly and, and mildly, it looks like the smell is getting to you just a little bit. No, there. I love the smell of salmon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, there's this great timeline that shows just, um, you can look this up online. It's on our, it's on our website, but uh, adamolson.ca. Yeah, so this, this catalogs, you know, you have been speaking up about this consistently. Uh, Andrew and Sonia have been supporting you. You've brought this up. Um, so what, 
What were you hoping for in bringing this this forward and giving this to government? So one of the things that we recognized, and it, it, we, we didn't actually recognize it uh, out of our own volition, we were told it uh, in a letter uh, from the Ministry of Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations that there were up to seven, quote, leading uh, ministries, end quote, on fish, uh, dealing with fish, uh, wild salmon policy. And the, the conversation that we had was that, frankly, if there are seven ministries leading, that that's a, a challenge for government. And the fragmentation uh, is a point of exploitation. Frankly, we could be our provincial government can be exploited by the DFO, uh, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, the federal government, because we've got so much fragmentation within uh, the provincial ministries. And so we put this together. We hosted a, a roundtable in Vancouver where we brought together a, a diverse uh, um, a group of of people in the salmon, wild salmon constituency, everything from conservationists, so habitat protection, First Nations, uh, commercial and uh, sport, sporties. Um, and we had a conversation and the it was founded around, a, a central uh, centralized around a question that I asked the Premier uh, back earlier in the spring, should we or, or could we have a wild salmon secretariat that brings together the decision making, focuses us, uh, and 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 brings it forward to the provincial go or federal government uh, in a more powerful voice with strength. Uh, and so our our recommendation was to create a wild salmon secretariat yeah. today. Yeah. Now so, we get to today. And, and just before we get into today, I do just uh, a few Sorry. people are commenting about the fish farm uh, tenures. Uh, we will get to that. So uh, that's coming up for sure. Um, today, what happened today? So today uh, I had a chance to stand with uh, Premier Hor uh, John Horgan and Minister Lana Popham uh, in, uh, in the legislature and announce the formation of a wild salmon advisory council. This is, and the wild salmon secretariat that we propose. This is the work of a minority government, of an opposition party and their partner working together to advance an important issue for all British Columbians and culminating in the work from the minority party uh, being successful and frankly uh, working alongside as partners uh, because we all need to be working for the benefit of wild salmon. Like I said today, good salmon policy. Good salmon policy is good economic, good social and good environmental policy and that was broadly recognized. So we had the announcement today, a 14 member group co-chaired by uh, MLA Doug Routley from North Cowichan, uh, Nanaimo, North Cowichan. Uh, and uh, Chief Marilyn Slett from the uh, Heltzik First Nation uh, in Bella Bella, where uh, one of my relatives, uh, Travis Hall, is. Uh, and a bunch of uh, folks, uh, First Nations, uh, conservation, uh, habitat, uh, commercial, the, the, the whole gamut of, of uh, fish people, people working in the fish uh, uh, wild, uh, for wild salmon policy uh, will be sitting uh, together. And, and beginning to work out a made in BC wild salmon policy for the first time, maybe even ever. Okay. Now, a, a lot of people, and I've been watching social media as this has come out, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people have commented, um, and they, they, they're looking at this, and they seem to feel that this is just another research committee. Uh, the NDP cons you know, do research on every subject, uh, and often the reports get ignored. So... Uh, the, where, how do you address that concern? So is, is this just another research group that is going to produce a report and then it gets shelved and then that's the end of this? Or or is this different? Uh, well, I think that it's... I Personally, I think that it's different in the sense that we're bringing together a wide group of, of folks from outside of government, people with experience, uh, led by the Coastal First Nations, uh, Chief Marilyn uh, Slett, as I, as I mentioned, uh, Paul Correa, who's been in the in this industry for a long time with Coastal First Nations, uh, in fact, was the the head of uh, Fisheries Renewal BC back at the end of the 1990s and early 2000s. Um, this group and and you know, criti I, I, I hear the criticism. Mm -hmm. This group will be judged based on uh, it's the success of it. So the skeptics, uh, sure, I, I accept it. Um, I'm a part of that group, and I certainly am not. Just as I've, as I've been, uh, you know, uh, critical of the approach of the government and supportive of the uh, government making different, uh, 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 different changes to their approach. Uh, I'm a part of the conversation. I'll be part of this group. I'm also on the Agriculture, Food, and Fish a st Select Standing Committee that will receive this report. I'm also on that report. So in an, in it, you know, uh, I guess. Not careful what you wish for, but 
um, the premier and his advisors, Premier John Horgan and his advisors, have put me on this in the, within this group. I will I will be there to encourage us to come forward with a plan. Uh, remember, the goal of this is for the benefit of wild salmon. It's not for personal benefit or the benefit of the people there. It's we all benefit when the salmon benefit, and that will be the approach that I'm taking. And I will be constantly encouraging this group and any group that is dealing with this to put together a productive plan so that we can uh, benefit salmon and benefit everybody and uh, the, the the economy, the environment, and our society. Now, just uh, talking about planning, what is the situation for salmon right now? Uh, well, it's it's <laughs> it's a pretty urgent actually. There are uh, a wide variety of challenges facing the the salmon industry, and we, we've we've received a number of messages here around fish farming, and that is one part of a very complex and 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 unbelievable challenges that are faced uh, that the salmon, uh, the wild salmon face, not the least of which uh, forestry practices in our province, the agriculture practices in our province, the creeks, how we treat our creeks, streams, and watersheds, uh, how we build our roads and highways, uh, making sure that we're not blocking critical fish habitat, how we build and plan our communities to ensure that new neighborhoods aren't built right on top of uh, critical habitat for fish, uh, fish-bearing streams, um, how we manage the estuaries where the, where the wild salmon are, and then climate change on top of that. There's no question that the challenges facing wild salmon are broad. And so that's just on the land. Yeah. Then they hit open ocean and they're managed by DFO, which... You know, as I said in an interview today, I'm not sure whether they even like salmon. It seems like they're part of managing our fish stocks to zero. And, and part of the challenges that we have with them are the, the licensing and the locations of fish farms. And, and the, we, we are here hearing loud and clear from people that were expecting perhaps this to be an announcement today about fish farms. It, was not a, it never was an announcement about fish farms. This was about uh, taking it one level higher and dealing with it at a at a at a at a place in which uh, we're looking at all of the aspects, uh, impacts, and challenges facing wild Pacific salmon. Yeah. Now I, I think a lot of people were really very hopeful that this would be an announcement about the fish farm ten years. Yeah. Uh, for people who are sort of um, care about salmon but haven't been closely involved in this issue, uh, they may not be aware of your position on on the fish farm ten years. So do you do you mind just uh, speaking a bit about kind of the work you've done around the ten years? Yeah. So look, I and my colleagues have been extremely clear, not just here on, on uh, Public Circle Live, uh, on in question period, there's videos, there's work that we've done. We visited, uh, we visited uh, the Numgis territory and got toured uh, around uh, the, what was then as Swanson Island. It was an empty fish farm. Now they've, they've restocked it. We've been excessively clear that we are opposed in every way to the uh, continuation of the open net fish farms uh, on our coast, especially in the Broughton Archipelago, right in the uh, right in the migratory routes of of wild salmon, and on, and I I stand with those people who are extremely concerned about the continuation of this, and I want to be and I want to be clear. This was never today was never about, and the work that I did was never specifically about fish farms. It was specifically about protecting wild salmon, of which fish farms are a part. The announcement that people are waiting for around fish farms, I, I stand with you in waiting for those that answer and that plan. Uh, I am a part of, I, I am as concerned uh, about the issues around that. And so um, that's, another, uh, <laughs> that's another announcement that the government has to make. So I think, uh, I think the challenges that they have for them are, are very clear. Uh, I've certainly uh, had many conversations with the various ministries about this, the challenges that they're faced with the election promises that were made uh, during the election. There's videos of that. It's clear that the challenges are over, are, are, are very big for this government on it. I think I, I want to be very clear that, that there are two, uh, I wouldn't say, there's, there's two distinct approaches that are being, that are being taken here. The the advocates who want fish farms out of the uh, out of the ocean have taken a uh, are, are looking at that issue specifically, and I have always been uh, looking at the the broader uh, issues um, with with a special eye to the specific issues around forestry, which I have to deal with around indigenous relations, which I 
I'm the critic for uh, municipal affairs and housing uh, and agriculture, which includes aquaculture and finfish aquaculture. Which, by the way, this government inherited a government uh, that in t that's the, the NDBC NDP inherited a government which, you know, a finfish aquaculture was deeply embedded. We go back to the time that John Van Dongen at the, at the last election said, we have a different approach. We're getting rid of fisheries renewal BC. We're going for a private approach. We're going for finfish aquaculture. And the BC liberals embedded that so deeply into this government. It's important to recognize that. And it's important to put the, put the, uh, the responsibility, uh, the, the responsibility of changing is on, is on this current government. But it's important to understand how we got to where we're at. Yeah. Now, what about the people? So people currently work in the fish farms, sure. um, all uh, yeah. you know, wherever they happen to be. Um, what What do you say to them? Because you know, for them, their livelihood is tied up in this industry. So what's the What's the plan there? Yeah, I mean, I think that what's What's important is that we're transitioning this, and we have an opportunity to do it with the uh, twenty something licenses uh, in the short term in the Broughton Archipelago. Uh, the The Muscomal people have been ex extremely clear about for thirty years, for three decades, about their opposition to this industry in their waters, and they've even put a project together called Katera that has been uh, to study the uh, the viability of it on land. Uh, we've, we've seen that viability increasing, not just in, in, in our region, but uh, around the world, yeah. uh, on our coast, on the East Coast. And, and then uh, Washington State has also moved, uh, moved to a transition out of open ocean to on land. And so the jobs can be there. Uh, the jobs will be there. Uh, and what we need is we need to put together a thoughtful transition plan um, and, uh, and, and to work with people in British Columbia to ensure that they understand what that plan is and that we move, uh, move quickly. There, there is an urgent need for us to stand up for wild salmon. There's an urgent need for us to deal with the disease, the waste, the, um, the, uh, the impact that those fish farms are having whether it be sea lice, whether it be yeah. the viruses, whether it be the fact that, uh, that, that the lights are attracting um, wild salmon smolts to mm -hmm. become basically Atlantic, an invasive feed for an invasive species, uh, it's, it's enough to make you, or, or the processing which is pumping uh, this blood water directly in as we've seen, or the destruction of, 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 of sensitive habitat uh, like uh, the reefs that we've seen the videos of. Some very compelling images that we need to be uh, paying very much attention to. Some very compelling science and work being done by people all up and down the coast that we need to be paying attention to. Wow. Um, so I, I'm just conscious of, of I don't want to take too much of time because I tend to go over when I'm on here. Uh, but we, talk, we talk, what, for hours? We usually go like well over half an hour. I do just, so, you know, this it's tough um, because we're talking about declining stocks. We're talking about... Uh, lower returns. We're talking about habitat destruction. Uh, there's not, I, I'm not feeling super optimistic. Um, but today's announcement felt good. So where, where's, where's your optimism right now? Uh, my optimism is in, in the process of government, uh, you know, and, and the confidence that, that we can move things forward. You know, I think at a, at a very high level of setting salmon, I'll, I'll talk about the optimism around salmon shortly. Uh, but optimism around a minority government working, mm. uh, you know, and, and it's, it's funny. I'm either 100 percent to blame for everything or, you know, uh, or 100 percent powerful and can change anything, you know, and I, I assure people that it's neither of those things. Um, it is a really unique situation. Sometimes I'm the most least powerful person around from from what it feels like. So uh, I, I can assure people that it, that that it's a work in progress, that there is no. You know, there's no handbook to how to make this work, and so it is about building relationships. It's about building uh, uh, relationships on integrity, um, uh, speaking powerfully and passionately, but also uh, on under speaking gently and understanding the challenges as best as possible. So, you know, th this has been a learning experience, no question for me and for my colleagues. Uh, and so, I, but this, but this announcement today is a testament to how um, a minority government uh, can work to achieve an outcome. The fact that we're still dealing with, um, that we're still dealing with fish farms is a testament to the fact that we have to find other ways to be compelling to get, uh, you know, other decisions that are made. Yeah. So, you know, to, uh, 
to the question about when, uh, if we know when the announcement on the ten years will be made, no, um, we don't. I don't. I don't uh, know when. I think that uh, I think that the clock is running out. The twentieth is the date that the that it goes from being uh, that, that that expires, and uh, and so I imagine that it's going to be very soon. But I can honestly tell you, I don't know. Uh, what the plans are. I'm not brought into that. There's been a conversation between the provincial government and the First Nations uh, in the in the area. Lawyers are involved, and when lawyers are involved, we're not. Mm, yeah. So, optimism. <laughs> yeah. Now to answer your question, uh, I'm optimistic because I th- because I, I know that British Columbians are passionate about this and that we can get behind it, and I'm 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 optimistic about it because I. I really truly believe what I said earlier, which is good salmon policies, good environmental, good social, and good economic policy. You know, this is about rural communities and it's about urban communities. This is about rural economies and it's about uh, urban economies. This is about uh, a, a, a more um, a more sustainable relationship with our environment. It's about managing water properly and managing estuaries properly. It's about good farming practices. It's about uh, good community development practices, good riparian management uh, practices. So I, I'm excited because we've got a lot of good people around the table. There's going to be, you know, we, we've already seen in articles that some of the right people are at the table, some of the wrong people are at the table, some of the wrong people are not at the table, and some of the right people are not at the table. And, you know, there's all of this back and forth about who should be there and who isn't there. I can tell you that uh, that we we all will be working. These are all people that have uh, shown a, a passion. Uh, there's going to be lots of uh, criticism, lots of congratulations, lots of uh, politics, frankly. No. The, the reality is is that we got to start putting salmon at the center of our thinking and we'll start to make much better uh, policy decisions, uh, public policy decisions, in a wide variety of different areas, uh, whether, yeah. Uh, and, 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 you know, we're seeing, what was it? 826 emails about old growth forests. 860. 800, sorry. And that's since uh, two weeks ago. 860 since two weeks ago. Since the last time I said there was 4,000, we got 800 <laughs> more. We're, uh, we're getting close to 5,000 unique people contacting us about old growth. So, so and, and, this is, and, and this is an issue that we can deal with through salmon. I mean, mm-hmm. what we're talking about in logging old growth is we're talking about logging some of the most important salmon uh, uh, habitat. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it's not just salmon habitat, but, you know, this was to the point earlier about how do you manage multiple ministries and being the critic for multiple ministries. And this is where uh, Standing Up for Wild Salmon has allowed that to happen. I can talk about the, in context of the work that we've done and consist, with consistency uh, the impact that it's going to have in cutting old growth. Now... There's arguments to be made that what the heck are we doing cutting old growth anyway, mm. especially the big tree old growth when we've got so little of it, yeah. um, and and we're certainly taking that on as well. But you know we need a comprehensive economic plan, a vision for the future that includes uh, more sustainable economic development, more sustainable relationships with uh, with the um, with resource development resource communities the former government allowed resource communities to be hollowed out gutted and encouraging people to get out of rural bc and into urban bc so that they could continue with their unsustainable resource extraction policies i think we need to uh to reinvest and and support uh those uh, resource communities in british columbia uh with sawmills and with fish packing plants and with canneries and with uh the the work that uh that this province uh, and the people in this province on the coast and inter- interior did for so many years. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's most of what I've seen. Obviously, it's only been a day, so I'm sure I'll see lots more emails about this and, and people's thoughts on it. Um, but that's that's all I have. Uh, yeah, I think, well, let's um, let's look. just go through here and, and take a couple of minutes here. We just have a couple of minutes to... Uh, why is there no announcement specifically on revoking the licenses today? It's so frustrating. Appreciate your stance and your work you're doing, but we don't need more studies and reports to determine that fish farms. Must... I, I, I think we do need to. I need to clarify this. Yeah. Um, this was the, what was announced today was not about studying and reporting 
on fish farms. This was about thought that. this was about how do we bring the six or seven ministries in the provincial government together to to create a maiden BC wild salmon policy of which finfish aquaculture or open net pen fish farms that we see in the Broughton Archipelago and, and in and around near Tofino are one part of it. And so that's what this that's what this was about. This was not about studying fish farms. And I think that you're right. There's been a there's been a growing uh, body of evidence and and scientific uh, evidence, especially just this past spring, about what the we impact. did our own study on. It. Yeah, that's right. Well, but this was on wild salmon, but on on fish farms particularly, yeah. the the scientific evidence is starting to mount. And and frankly, I think that the fish farm companies are are reeling right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I just wanted to be uh, to be to answer that uh, that question, uh, and again, I, it's come up a couple of times that 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 we're studying fish farms. That's not the case. What we're doing is we're looking at ways that we can bring policy making together at the broad level, dealing with wild salmon. And again, fish farms are one part of that. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining us today. Please share this video. Please uh, hit the like button. Hit the love button if. You know, the heart button, I guess it is. That's one a of heart these. button. The heart button. Um, you know what? And if, and, if, and if this makes you angry and sad that they haven't <laughs> done what, the, what you believe that they should do and what we believe, what we've asked them to do around fish farms, hit, the sad, hit that sad button and hit that angry button. Uh, show, us, show us exactly what it is uh, that you feel about this issue. Um, I'm excited that we were able to show that we were able to move something forward. You yep. can email us. Yep. Email us at the office. Yep. Adam.olson.mla at ledge.bc.ca. Call Give us. us. A call. Yeah. What is that number? Uh, 250-655-5600. You can check out all the work that we've done and a copy of the Wild Salmon Report on the website at adamolson.ca. Thank you very much for spending some time this Friday afternoon with you. Uh, we will get back. I do recognize it's been two weeks since we've done this. We right. will be back in the in the um, regular flow. Yep. With uh, next Friday. And you are. And I'm Ryan Clayton. And I'm Adam Olson. I'm the MLA in Sandwich North and the Islands. Thank you very much for joining us today. Please do keep leaving your comments, and uh, and you know we'll have this posted on on uh, you on YouTube later. So thank you very much for joining us live. Thank you for joining us uh, after the fact. We appreciate it. We'll be back again same time, same place next week uh, on Facebook. So until then, ayekwa.